Hello, welcome back everyone. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at two cases, Lori Vallow and the tragic events around James Hutchinson, the six year old child who was killed by his mother at Rush Run Park in Ohio. So thank you for joining me today. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. So new facts that are, that are coming to light about the tragic events and death of James Hutchinson. Um, first, the mother is, she has been uh, arraigned on the, on the charges. She has been given a $2 million uh, bond. She can bond out on that if she is able to come up with $2 million in collateral plus 10%. Uh, I highly doubt that she will be able to since, well, she said one of, in her statement, one of the reasons why she needed to get rid of all three of her children, James six, his two siblings, ages nine and seven, were, was because she couldn't afford to keep the children anymore. So I highly doubt she'll ever be able to come up with a $2 million bond on this case. But some of the new facts that are coming out on this case is why did she pick Rush Run Park to abandon her children at? It turns out that she's familiar with this actual park, that on more than one occasion with her boyfriend and with the biological father of the other children, that she had been to this park at least once or twice before to go fishing. It was a happy memory, a place where the family was able to exist, enjoy their time. And on each of these trips to Rush Run Park, they saw a lot of wildlife and it is known that in this wildlife uh, um, preserve area, Rush Run Park, that there are wolves, there are other animals that frequent this area that are dangerous to adults, let alone children. So she went this, to this park uh, on this early morning to abandon her children. Did she assume that if the cold that morning didn't get them, because again, it was just barely above freezing when she went there to abandon her children. Did she assume that if the, if the cold didn't get them, that the wildlife in, the, in that area would? You know, that's the way it's looking right now. That, that is what she had planned. It's also come out that when she went to this, this park area and decided to place James outside the, of it. And he grabbed the handle to her minivan. When she dragged him, he may have um, been, a, been caught on the on van more. Um, and that's what caused her to drag him for as long as, he, you know, as she did before running him over that it, the minivan itself um, has several spots on it of rust where there's open shards of metal from the body panels. And James's clothing may have been attached or caught, snagged on the rust on the side of the minivan, which dragged him along even farther. I couldn't imagine what that, those last tragic moments of James's life had to be like. The one person in this world that's supposed to protect you is your mother. And here she is, she puts you, loads you and your siblings up in the van. The ride there to this rural secluded area did he know 
beforehand what was about to transpire? Did his siblings know? And the next thing he knows, his mother stops the van at a park that he's gone to before to go fishing. The sunlight is just barely coming up over the hills. And the next thing he knows, his mother is forcing him out of the van. Just him. And then she walks back around to the van and starts to drive away. What were those last few moments of his life like? But we can't change those. We can't get them back. And because of her deeds that day, James is dead. And yes, there were a lot of agencies out there that could have still helped, even with the COVID shutdown. James's father, biological father, James's sis, biological sis, father's sister. But you know, just a couple there. The local church there. Outreach community centers, fire departments, police departments. There's a lot of places she could have gone if she couldn't take care of her children anymore. But she didn't choose that. I'll never understand as long as I do true crime, I'll never understand how anyone can hurt a child, how anyone could ever raise their hand in violence towards a child. But it happens, it happens, well, unfortunately, way more than it needs to. Where have we come as a society? Have we advanced to the point where this is an acceptable course that if you don't want your children anymore, that you abandon them. It's not the first case of something like this happening where a parent has felt that they have no other recourses, even though there are several you know, agencies out there that will help them. It's not the first time that a case like this has come up in the last couple of years where a parent just loaded their child into a, into a vehicle and took them someplace, a park or a secluded area, and just dropped them off and drove away. And unfortunately, I don't think it would be the last. So James's mother is being held on $2 million bond. Their next court date is March 22nd. It is for a pre-trial uh, hearing where they will uh, go over um, certain things for the case, um, certain motions that uh, were most likely to be filed between now and then. They both uh, entered not guilty pleas to what happened to James. And they waived their right to a speedy trial. So a tentative trial date has been set for May 24th of 2021. The likelihood is that it will be moved because of the backlog of cases that the court case is in the courts there are actually facing right now. And lastly, on this case, before I walk away from it from today, is it was announced yesterday after the court hearing that because of the charges that have currently been filed by the DA and statements by the DA, they do not see any aggravating circumstances in this case. And without an aggravated circumstance in this case, there will be no death penalty, no capital murder charges filed against the mother or the boyfriend in this case. So no death penalty, no eye for an eye in this case for what she did to James and what she was planning to do with all three of her children. It's sad. 
It's sad that anyone ever gets to this point where they feel that the human life, a child's life, an adult's life, isn't worth being preserved. So we should just take them and whenever we're, we're done with them, just abandon them. But that's where the James Hutchinson case is. As of the end of the week, the 12th of March, 2021. Lori Vallow. Just when you thought there was no possible way for this case to get any more twisted than it already is. We've seen, well, first let's not forget the tragic events that took us to this point. The death of JJ and his sister, Tylee. Two lives that were snuffed out for no reason at all. Buried, forgotten, as the mom and her new husband, soon to be husband, would take off for wherever they went for the next 23 days. Nobody knows. But from the time that they disappeared in Idaho until their plane ticket was purchased and they landed in Hawaii, nobody knows where they went. But they partied it up, they enjoyed their lives. And somehow they slept every night knowing that JJ and Ty Lee were dead and buried in the back part of Chad's farm. And Chad somehow knew as he burned Ty Lee in that bonfire, trying to cover up what he had done, he was able to sleep. He was able to go on with life. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a monster. But back to this court case, as twisted as it is, yesterday we found out that both Mr. Means and Mr. Pryor filed what's called an ex parte protective order. What is an ex parte protective order? And how does it differ from a normal protective order? A normal protective order is an order of the court and to protect an, an individual, you, me, somebody, to protect an individual from another individual. They must stay so, so much you know, a distance away. They can't contact you. They can't be anywhere near you to protect you from bodily, possible bodily harm that that person may inflict upon you or emotional pain that they may inflict upon you, protecting you from another party. That is a normal restraining order. In a criminal justice case, an ex parte order is an order that, is that someone seeks to protect them from evidence or release of evidence. In this case, Mr. Pryor and Mr. Means both filed for an ex parte order protecting them and their clients from not only themselves, but each other, but the release of certain information to the public, to the DA, to anybody from finding, the, finding out about the information. And before we go any further, yeah, the DA is going to find the information out as the case goes on. But they filed these, these motions together at the same time to protect their clients from the information that they already know. You know, I watched two other well-known uh, lawyers um, who have YouTube channels, Scott Reich to be, um, uh, Reich to be uh, one. And in his 23, 30 years of law practice, he's never seen anyone ever filed a motion like this. 
Sure, the criminal justice system varies slightly from state to state, but the law is the law. And no one has ever seen anything like this at all. Why would you file an ex parte motion to protect your client from the information that they already know? Is there something out there that we're not aware of in this case where neither Chad nor Lori are aware of the actual facts? We don't know. Uh, it really, it makes your head spin. If you, if you really follow the law, this will make your head spin <clears throat> because it's so bizarre that anybody would need to be protected from information that they already know. And this is in, in an emergency order. This is not something that is like, ah, we'll take care of it, you know, along with the motion if, you know, Lori gets makeup or not. This is an emergency order. So they very well could take care of this motion before the actual uh, case gets too much farther down the road because the, the judge is compelled to have to act upon this emergency order right away, either granting the order, protecting them from their own information and what they already know, or, you know, at a loss i really am i have studied and researched a lot of cases over the years about people who are in cults and people who have committed some of the most you know worst atrocities in their cases you know known the man i've never seen anything like this at all i've never seen two defendants with two attorneys with two completely different you know, um, avenues to try to win the release of their clients. And I've never seen a case where they felt that they needed to file a motion to protect their clients from the information that they already know. They're gonna get the information. They can't disseminate the information right now they can't move forward beyond you know, reading it. And then they feel that they need to file protective orders so it doesn't get released to the public. Now, this, this case on these, on these two motions, we'll never, um, we'll never know about it. This case will be sealed, just like all protective orders. You know, if you file a protective order against an individual, it is a sealed case, the information within there is sealed. Yeah, you may be able to find that there is a protective order in place, but you'll never find out the information with inside of the actual protective order. They take this very seriously. This is not just in the, one of the weird motions that Mr. Means has filed to drum up some kind of media attention for it when he really shouldn't be trying to drum up media attention at all. This is a motion that is serious has serious you know, ramifications if it's granted and is a serious uh, matter that the court will not just say, you know, okay, we're just going to toss this aside, laugh it off and walk away. Well, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you'd give this a thumbs up, you know, and uh, let, you know, YouTube and the algorithm know that you enjoyed this content. If you, you know, have only watched one video and this is it, well, thank you for stopping by. But I have a whole channel of over 500 videos for, you know, on YouTube right now. Why don't you go check one out? Links, uh, you know, down below. There's a, you know, next suggested video there. Um, you can subscribe too. I wouldn't mind if you would do that.